Hey, what's going on? I got a new video here today. It's a 2500 Denali Duramax. It's a really nice truck. They came in, they wanted to get the molding and emblems debadged as well as polish the paint uh, and then seal it afterwards. The interior and whatever little touch-up stuff I did. This isn't really a how-to video. This is just how I went about it. Uh, so let's get started. First day, spent about four and a half hours just washing it. I hosed the wheels down with water uh, and then sprayed degreaser all over the tire and wheel face. Normally I don't do it on the wheel face, but uh, these were pretty gunked up. I let it set up for like 15 to 30 seconds and, and just kind of do its work. The was working, I did hit the lug nuts before I scrubbed the tire. Just everything down, I then washed the wheel face off again, and then I hit the inner barrel of the wheel. I did notice that the exhaust was pretty rough looking, so I took a red scotch bright pad and some tar remover, sprayed the tar remover on there, uh, scuffed it with the red scotch bright pad, and then took a razor blade and chipped away at the bigger pieces of asphalt. I did scuff it all the way up to the axle to blend it all in to make it look good. I didn't want to, you know, look lazy or shoddy, so I went ahead and did the rest of it. Did hit the inner uh, piping as well, and then I noticed that the receiver was looking pretty rough, so you can see here, it just starts to snowball. So I scuffed that up with the red scotch right pad. My intentions were to spray paint it, uh, but you'll see I did something different later in the video. The carpeted wheel wells are kind of a pain, but really my strong suit. If you take a stiff bristle brush and some degreaser, uh, it's time consuming, it sucks, it's not fun, but if you sit there and are patient, you'll get the results you want. The thing I did before washing the paint, I scrubbed the floor mats. Really simple, stiff bristle brush and some degreaser, nothing crazy. So as for a soap for the first wash, I used a strip soap, Obsessed Garage, same stuff I've always been using. Before you're gonna polish paint, you wanna do that. I hit the intricate areas like the door jams, gas caps, engine bay, etc. Before I hit any of the problem areas like the windshield, front clip, mirrors, under the doors, you know, stuff where gunk gets kind of uh, accumulates. I took the greaser and sprayed over those areas to make it easier to wash and to keep my mitt from getting gummed up and creating more scratches. Next I did was the iron dissolver. It was really frustrating washing this truck outside. It was so hot and uh, I kept having to uh, soak the truck down and it just was really time consuming. You really don't want to do it in direct sunlight but I had to do what I had to do, part of it. So what I would do is I took a fresh microfiber, I would let it set up for about 15 to 20 seconds after I soaked the paint to cool it down, and I just went in smaller sections and then worked it with the microfiber and then rinsed really well. You really gotta focus on that one. The next step, part three, was clay barring. I just use soapy water for this and it kind of allows me to go back and, and touch up anything else I missed from the first two washes. People use spray lubricants, there's nothing wrong with that. I just like using soapy water. Creo synthetic clay bar. Not the most aggressive clay bar, but it does work really well and it's nice to not beat your hands up. Uh, that being said, I did start to notice these little specks. For four days, I thought it was just overspray. Turns out it was chic rock dust uh, because that's what he does for a living. So I put that together as I was making this video. So that's what it was. Most of it came out. Ideally, I would have had my more aggressive clay bar. Ended up getting most of it out, and whenever I didn't get out, the rest came out with the polisher, and it didn't leave any trailing or anything, so it, it all worked out well. I took a notepad, drew a door out, and started taking measurements of where the emblems and moldings were. I did save all that stuff for them. I don't think they cared if I did or didn't, but I wanted to do that just in case, and they really appreciate it. More than likely, they're, they won't reuse those emblems, but they'll have it for the next person, or. If anything, they'll have the measurements, so if they want to reinstall the emblems. Fishing line's probably going to be your best. Some people use uh, dental floss. 
Really the important thing is, is it's getting the glue really hot, which is something I wasn't doing. It's really gonna have to heat it up for a long time for the clear coat to start failing. So you, you just kinda have to do it for a little bit and try it out. And uh, just go a little bit past your comfort level and it, it will start to come off easy. So I used some string and started sawing away at the glue. I was only spending around 30 seconds heating it up and I don't have the best heat gun, so that's why I was having to saw so much. Like I said, if you heat it up really well, you can really just cut through it like butter. You, know, you might move slowly over the section you're gonna do. Uh, mine, I needed to spend about a minute. Once I started to kind of push the, uh, you know, push my comfort zone over there, I really just kind of flew through that. Another thing to be cautious of are the side bowlings. I've seen people go and actually rip the door, uh, rip the trim off the door. Like I said, I was trying to save those, so I saw through the whole thing. At some point, you can just kind of pull it off gently if you get it hot enough, but I do not recommend pulling it because you can actually create a wave effect in your door uh, and I don't even know if a PDR guy can fix that. You could have to get a whole new door, so just be really careful of that. Take your time with it, don't rush it. Getting the glue off was a challenge. I would heat the glue up and then just kind of uh, peel it off with my fingers. Eventually they got really raw, beat up, bloody. I took the 3M eraser wheel and started to work the glue off. It's still kind of a mess though. You really want a drill with a handle on it so you can create some sort of a, a leverage with it because you're really going to smoke your forearm. So if, if I ever do this again, I will probably have to get a drill with a handle on it uh, just to make life easier. You also would want some lacquer thinner. I was just using stoner bug and tar remover like what I used on the exhaust and it's great stuff and it will get you by. Uh, but I, I want to move a lot faster than I did the last time. If, like I said, if I were to do this again, so a lacquer thinner would probably be the route to get the excess glue off. Even after the eraser wheel, there's still glue stuck on there. So it's just kind of a pain. You, you need something kind of like that. It was the lines. So, you know, that paint had been untouched for five or six years. So that was going to be a challenge in itself, blending everything into the swirl paint. But what I was worried about is doing multiple steps in those sections where the lines were at and then not doing a full correction in the rest of the paint. So, to get the lines out, this, I don't, like I said, this really isn't a how-to, but I took, took a Meguiar's cutting pad, my dual action, and just some compound, um, 1500 grand removal compound, and got the passenger side door lines off, no problem. The emblem I had a challenge with removing, so I actually used my new Rupes Nano Polisher with a uh, blue coarse pad, it's pretty aggressive, as well as the pol polish that comes with it. Uh, for the most part, I used a mixture of five different pads, compounds, and polishes. The Like I said, the, the uh, driver's side was really difficult. I just ended up using the Nano 1 inch with the uh, blue coarse pad and their compound to get the rest of those lines off as well as the ones on the hood. Um, but it was weird that the driver's side only needed, you know, the cutting compound. Anyways, uh, the rotary really didn't do me any good, nor did the uh, dual action, just the one inch. So the only issue with using that combination is it did leave a trailing behind because it, you know, scuffed those lines out. So I did end up fixing that just with the one step polish and it really wasn't too hard to remove. I did have to wet sand the tailgate just on the sections where there was glue and adhesive. Uh, used a 3000 grit wet sandpaper. Actually the same process I'll show you in this clip. Uh, there was a couple of scratches uh, kind of in an X pattern. I'll show you how to remove that. That was the same way I removed the lines in the tailgate. Didn't have to do any other wet sanding um, on the emblems or lines or anything like that. Got some scratches here. You can see the See a giant X right here? I actually just got this one inch polisher. I've been using this for a lot of stuff in this video. But it's got these adhesive backed wet sandpaper. And I've got all these different uh, like accessories and stuff. I can actually like switch it to rotary. Uh, that's got like a longer throw, different backing plates. So it's really nice. I'm gonna give this a go. I'm gonna start with 3,000. These aren't super deep. And uh, then I'll just compound over it. I am going to use a soapy water mixture and then just lay it flat, no pressure, and just slowly take a couple, couple passes over it and see what that does. Okay. 
it dulled it down quite a bit. So I'm gonna use my rotary and some wizards. I use this stuff a lot. Whenever you're wet sanding, you want forced rotation. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna leave it right where it's at. It's very, very dull now, and I'll bring the camera back once I'm finished. So the X is still there, but it's been dulled down enough. When I go back and polish it, it will kind of all blend in. You'll still catch it there sometimes, but to the eye, uh, this is probably like a three footer now. So if we back up further, you're not really gonna catch it unless you're right up on it. For surf polishing, uh, I did wipe each panel down with the silty water mixture, a microfiber, and then a chamois. I ran a couple of test spots to figure out what was going to correct the most as well as bring the most shine since this was an enhancement more than it was correct. I ended up finding out that the uh, white pad with just some polish was going to be the best route so that's what I did. Thankfully I got that one inch uh, nano polisher now and I was able to do the uh, pillars and edges of the windows and, and get those results I, I want. Uh, it's really frustrating when you know you have the the right way but you don't have the tools to get the results you're wanting so it's kind of been one of those annoying things and I'm glad now that I finally have it. There is what you can get away with using a five inch polisher and stuff uh, like I'll open the doors and uh, would hit the areas like that I kind of just showed you um, right there how I would go about doing that it's not hard but it, it's just not really polishing it because uh, you really have to get it on a flat level surface so that's why you really need the one in. For polishing, I pulled the truck out and gave her a good rinse down again. Adam's soap and a fresh mitt, that was it. It was a mess after all the polishing and compounding. It was, you know, pretty dusty. So after I got done washing it, dried it off, I did put a 12 month paint sealant on there. I really like this stuff. It's from Chemical Guys. I used it on the Jeep. It's a, it's a good uh, alternative if you're not gonna have ceramic coat or anything like that and it really leaves a nice shine to it. I let that sit on there for around 30 to 40 minutes. It says 20 minutes, but I've been kind of pushing that and I think it cures a little bit better. At least I think it does. So that's just kind of what I do. Use a red microfiber to remove it. So after the paint sealant, I did bring it back outside, look over it, make sure I didn't miss anything, touched up some uh, areas where there might've been a little compound left behind or sealant, uh, then dress the tires for the same stuff I've been using the uh, all-purpose dressing then I did go back and kind of dress up the trim as well as for the dressing I didn't put it on the steps uh, anywhere anybody's gonna step you don't want to put any dressings like that it's kind of a liability and that can get really hurt so just kind of keep that in mind I just did the fenders and the front valence uh, as well as well as the inner fender so I don't want to skip the interior that really wasn't too bad. The panel I did, I worked with a cleaner and detail brush. That's pretty much what I usually do uh, to get all the uh, crevices, buttons, etc. So when I was cleaning the door with the cleaner on the driver's side, I noticed that there was like a, uh, I, I thought the door at first was failing like the uh, paint was. So I rubbed my finger on it and it started to rub off. So uh, I took a, uh, I took a magic eraser and some cleaner and it actually started to remove and it was is a silicone dressing a previous detailer or the owner might have left behind a lot of times you might just want to rub your finger across it and see if whatever it is rubs off uh, i've seen a lot of doors like that where they just look faded but actually it's just because they're gunked up so after that i cleaned the windows before i applied any conditioner over the plastics Reason being is if you use any sort of a window cleaner, it will splotch up the conditioned uh, panel. I also found it helps to go back over the windows with the chamois to make sure it doesn't leave any streaks. Wires all purpose uh, conditioner for like plastic. It leaves like a nice natural sign. Unfortunately, I can't find any more of it and the ones I can find are really expensive. So I don't really know what's going on there. That kind of stinks. I uh, might have to kind of get more creative and figure something else out. Last thing I did was scrub the carpets down. I used a shot vac with a uh, foam filter. That way the other one doesn't get worn out. Yes, I would like to have an extractor, um, but this works well for me. I try not to do a ton of those, um, but there's nothing wrong with doing it. My grandfather did that way back in the day. Uh, my parents did that, and uh, the process we use and the soap we use works really well. Well, that concluded the interior. 
It's been around 32 hours. It, it, it was time consuming. There's a lot of things I didn't mention even in the video. Um, it's just uh, kind of one of those things. It's hard to uh, capture everything on film when you're trying to get it done so they can have their vehicle back. So uh, another thing is too, I don't have a shop or, or anything like that. But uh, I just, I really enjoy making these and I appreciate it if y'all watch them. And I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, if you're maybe about to tackle a D-badge or want to polish your paint, just let me know. I'll try to help you. Um, this was uh, really gratifying to do. They were super happy, which of course made me happy. And uh, I felt like I gave them a great price and uh, they, they took care of me as well and I appreciate that. Uh, so thank you very much and uh, thanks for watching. Check out my other videos. I think they're uh, progressively getting better. So anyways, uh, take it easy and um, hopefully I'll see you on the next one.